Hello again and welcome to our garden. Today we're thinking about growing flowers to plant in our garden. In our garden we have many flower beds and flower borders and the structure of each of our flower beds and flower borders is formed by perennial plants. Perennial flowers flower year after year after year, sometimes for many years. So they flower each year, they die back during the winter and then they will come again the next year. I have two examples of perennial plants in front of me here. Plants that were propagated last year and are now ready to be planted out into the garden in April. First example that I've got is lupins, one of our favourite flowers. So these lupins were propagated last year and they will soon be put out into the garden. They are perennials and hopefully they will come up for quite a few years. Another example of perennial flowers that we have propagated are these anemones. These anemones were propagated last year and again they will soon be ready to put out into the garden. And these sort of flowers form the main structure of each one of our flower beds and our flower borders. The sort of perennials that we grow in our garden I've actually put down here on the list. So in our garden we have anemones, echinacea, heleniums, leucanthemums, lupins, monada, phlox, potentillas, rubecchias, scabiosas. Those are the sorts of perennials that we plant in our garden. We propagate most of these ourselves, often by dividing the roots, cuttings of different sorts, sometimes by seed. But obviously you can also buy these perennials from good garden centres and nurseries as well. Now as well as the perennial plants, in our garden we also use quite a few of annual bedding plants, annual flowering bedding plants. Now the annuals basically just live for one year and they all go around the outside of the perennial plants. They're the sort of finishing touch and they are often flowering when some of the perennials may have gone past their best. Now the sort of annual plants that we have in our garden include the adjuratum, bedding begonias, bedding geraniums, busy lizards, cosmos, gazania, marigold and salvias. These are just some examples of the sort of plants that we grow each year and we put into our garden in our flower beds and our flower borders. Now these, as I said, are annual plants, so we grow them each year. Basically they flower for just one year and then they die, are dug up and new ones are grown for the next year. Some of them would actually live longer if they were left outside and it wasn't a cold winter. But generally speaking, we use them as annual bedding plants. Now, as far as the annual bedding plants are concerned, we grow most of ours from seed. Now, I'm just going to talk for a moment or two about growing the flowers from seed. Now, this is an example of the sort of thing that we do. And we're going to try and keep this nice and simple. Here we've got a tray of compost, an ordinary good quality general purpose compost. Here we have some cosmos seeds. We love the cosmos. They're beautiful later in the season. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sow some cosmos seed into the tray. I'm not going to be particularly fussy about where I'm putting them. I'm just spreading them out fairly well. really not a difficult or daunting job at all. Okay, so I've put some cosmos into the tray. What I'm going to do now is 
I've sieved some multi-purpose compost. It's nice and smooth. It's nice and fine and smooth. So I'm just going to put some of this on top. We don't need a great covering, just a little bit on top of the seeds. It's really very simple, very easy. And in these videos, we're trying to keep things simple. We really are. Okay, so we've put our seed in there. That's some cosmos. So we would put a label in to make sure that we remember what it is that we've planted. We water it in well, and we would then need to put it into a greenhouse, polytunnel, or somewhere nice and warm inside the house, like a conservatory, a window ledge in a kitchen, something like that. And before long, they will start to come up, they will start to grow. So that's an example then of how we would start off seed. We say that these are our cosmos. I'm just going to put them down here for the moment. Now we're going to move on to the next stage. Because here we have some cosmos that we planted some time ago in one of our previous videos. And these cosmos have now come up and they're ready to actually transplant. So we're going to go on now to the next stage. What we call transplanting, pricking out however you want to describe it. So we have our lovely cosmos plants here and they're ready now to put into trays. Okay, so I've got some modules here that I filled with again a good general purpose compost, multi-purpose compost, and we're going to put some of these into the tray. So I'm simply loosening the little plants and I'm going to pick them up by their leaves and just put very carefully into the module. It's always said that it's best to pick it up by the leaf. It's actually quite an enjoyable job doing this. If they're getting a little bit leggy, a little bit tall, just put them further down into the compost. It's absolutely no problem at all. Okay, so that's where we've started our cosmos then. We would just carry on and we would finish those off. Probably again, label them just so that you know what they are. Put those down for the moment. And now we're going to move on to some marigolds. Now the marigolds, again, um, we planted the seed in one of our previous videos. And now we're going to be putting the marigolds into another tray of modules. So again, we're loosening these lovely little marigolds. And we're just very gently putting them into the module. Again, on a nice day when the birds are singing, it's very therapeutic. Actually very enjoyable doing this with something that you sowed the seed of not long ago. Okay, so that's all that I'm doing of those for the moment. Later on, we will continue and finish them off. Those are our marigolds. After finishing, we would water, we would label. Now, these will obviously need to go somewhere warm for the moment. There's no way that you consider putting these out into, out into the garden until very end of May, early June, depending really on what part of the country you live in. 
because in the south you can often put things out a week or two earlier than you can in the north. But there's certainly still frost around, there's cold winds around, so you really need to grow these on. So these trays of modules, and of marigolds and ecosmos, we're going to put into the polytunnel. You could use a greenhouse, again they could go into a conservatory, or somewhere in the house if you don't have anywhere suitable in your garden. And in a few weeks time, they should then be ready to plant out into the garden. By the time you're putting them out into the garden, they will be much taller, much stronger plants. And before you do plant them out, you need to actually harden them off a little bit, putting them outside, bringing them back in at night so that they're ready to cope with the conditions outside in your garden. Now we grow a lot from seed. We grow an awful lot from seed. But we also grow some things from plugs as well. We buy some plugs. And the final part of this section here, we're thinking about plug plants. Now one of the things that we buy in plugs are begonias, because we absolutely love begonias. Bedding begonias in our borders and our beds, uh, other types of trailing begonias, non-stop begonias in our tubs and our baskets and things such as that. And that quite difficult to grow from seed. Well, we find it quite difficult to grow from seed. And so we tend to grow them, we tend to buy them as plugs. So here's a little tray. This is part of a much bigger consignment of plugs that we bought. And so what we do here, we've got these begonias. These are non-stop begonias. And we're just going to ease them out of their plugs. Okay, just come on out please. Here we come. They're very delicate, these begonias. It's very, very easy to actually break them. You have to be a little bit careful. Okay, so we've got our begonias. And what we're going to do now, same sort of thing. Here we've got a tray with lots of individual pots in. Now we're going to put our begonias, our plug plants, into these holes again. Now when you get these plug plants cut, you'll often find that there's two in each little plug. Now here's one where there's two. I'm going to try to separate so that I've got two little plants for the cost of one. Okay, that one worked very well. Sometimes it's quite difficult to separate where you've got two plants. In this plug here, I seem to only have one plant. So we're going to put that one into there, like so. Let's see another one where we may have two. Looks as though we've got two here. So I'm very, very carefully and gently trying to separate these two. Won't always work. Sometimes you will break one, but you try. So there we've got our first line of little plants. One here again, I think I can separate, or can I? Now this one's not working out very well, so I'm just going to put it into the hole as it is. Let's try another one here, that's just one plant. So it goes into the hole. Another one. Into the hole. Another one, just a single. Into the hole. And then another one. And a single one into the hole, like so. Okay, so we would then just carry on and we would finish off the tray with the rest of the plug plants that we've got. And then again, that would need to go into a greenhouse, a polytunnel, somewhere like that. And it would need, they would need them to grow on for some time before they were eventually ready to put outside. So that gives you some idea then of the sort of flower plants that we grow in our garden, our perennials, our annual bedding. It gives you some idea about the propagation of them, particularly of the annuals. And we'll show you in a minute or two uh, what we are going to do in the next stage.